cleaning the ports I'm cleaning the ports and also making them a little bit larger just a little bit so with this and that Just so you know why I'm doing this because M54 head is very uh, kind of like small for its size even the ports the ports are tiny everything is too small it's underpowered uh, compared to even Honda or Toyota uh, four cylinder this is a six cylinder and it has a tiny little bit ports while it's a 3 liter and that's why it's only making 225 horsepower uh, plus uh, other th other things here but basically what I'm doing here is cleaning it and making it just a little bit larger it's not the point uh, to gain horsepower out of it because the car will be turbocharged anyways uh, but just to make it proper and all of this will be polished you'll see in a minute so this is the exhaust port as you can see it's getting a little larger the black stuff is the stuff I haven't touched so I have to go deeper but uh, them already bigger as you can see the place where gasket was applied is here but the black part is where the exhaust uh, tube was so you're talking about right here is where, where the pipe opens but the problem with these heads is if you look down let me make it this way if you look down I don't know if you can see okay here the the port goes this way so it narrows towards the end and that's the problem with these heads so you can only machine so much in here and uh, the most you can do here but still at the end of the day you have a very narrow opening now I can put two fingers in before I couldn't so this is probably as much as you can as much as you can do that's it I'm not doing too aggressive really on this end I'm doing a little bit and I'm going deep in there so that there is a pocket uh, when exhaust comes out it has enough force and also intake you don't have to do because the most gains you have technically is from the exhaust part not from the intake intake I haven't touched intake is intake so that's something you have to know okay quick update so what I'm doing I'm polishing the head with uh, three thousands and two thousands of sandpaper and the reason I'm doing it because when I was removing the old gasket a lot of um, actual debris from it was not a perfect finish and also I heard that you should not you should not machine anyhow uh, or um, basically apply any sort of uh, friction to the head because the head gasket itself is uh, steel and it won't flush anymore so what I'm having to do right now is to completely restore the finish and I'm gonna be keep polishing it until it's perfect and it takes a hell of a long time also there are microscopic uh, scratches as you can see here what I'm doing I'm applying aluminum powder to fill them in and polishing with aluminum powder so it all becomes universal so here is a little bit remaining i'm so tired doing this 
it's aluminum powder in there so it is crazy but uh like i said i'm overdoing it and i have a lot of time i can do this right now so i'll be continuing almost like coral this reminds me of some kind of coral that is accumulated in the ocean because I'm using steel mesh versus 2000 rpm drill <laughs> and it's barely coming off it's like stone basically it's weird And trust me no chemical dissolves this I've tried decreasers I've tried uh, lacquer sinners I've tried uh, acetone I've tried gasoline I've tried everything nothing works You see, it's like sand, almost like sand. Just clean the springs, had to use a rust compound, rust remover, and also put them in WD-40 and then wipe them down clean and store them this way. This, this is awesome. I love when parts look clean as if it's new. It's perfect. This is what I'm doing. Again, I'm taking everything apart very slowly. I clean it and make it nice, make it brand new and then I'm gonna install it. Whatever is broken, whatever cannot be reused, I'll be throwing away. So everything is cleaned. The head is ready for assembly. The only thing I'm missing is the valve steams. Once steams arrive, I'm gonna assemble the head and then continue on the engine I'm using 13 socket to push them in. And then basically with that.
nice and as you can see if I screw this one it moves one way see it moved the look at the bottom so this one is set up the way that when I screw it to the maximum pretty much that's when um, when I can insert the valves okay so the valves are in and now I do the actual valve locker you also you know there are six mil and seven mil lockers and I don't understand which one I have and I don't understand why there is seven maybe there is like upgraded thicker valves right so i guess i'm inserting it fuck we just dropped it and uh, we need a magnet for that one here we go this is it this is not gonna be So we are a little bit too high. So now we get right. So we are a little bit too high. So now we get rain. about enough so you can insert the lock the head is done the everything except the camshaft the reason camshaft isn't here because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use the ZHP advanced or I'm gonna use the regular one but everything else uh, valve steams springs valves everything has been cleaned and restored uh, valve steam has been replaced it took me a whole evening to reassemble this like two and a half hours maybe three because i did not have a, a special tool uh, you saw the tool i used I, i'll keep it i had to make my own tool because the actual tool that is sold is retarded expensive $300 for a tool that you're only going to use once. Why would you do that? Look at this. I was working on a carpet right there. You see? No spots. That's how clean this thing is. It's basically spotless clean. Even exhaust ports are being machined. Yes. Everything is cool. So now this goes to the actual other parts that are ready. Nice. Love it. I decided to film a little bit what I do. So remember we took the head off. So today I lifted the car again and dropped the exhaust.
So now I'm putting the car in neutral. It's in neutral. Damn, I feel so scared climbing under the car when it's in neutral. But this parking brake and this jack stands is the only thing that's holding me from life and death. And to make matters worse, one of the wheels has to be free and I had to release parking brake. So right now it's held by the jacks. I've been fucking chicken out. But I've done it before, so what's the matter? I do what I can. This is crazy. So remove that. Now this is the one I'm going for. Uh, here we go. That's the uh, 13th. Let's see with that one. how I got the drive shaft out of the way just screwed it there let it hang here away from the transmission and uh, everything else so now I don't have to come back here except for these two bolts and <coughs> this one disconnect Anyways, anyhow, uh, that's another day. It's fucking cold in here. There is like a fucking Chicago wind right now. I'm not even joking. It was 80 degrees the other day. Now it's like 60 during the time when it's sunny. And now it's probably 45 and windy as hell. So, not very pleasant day. Our disconnecting starter and here we have these two weird wires and I don't understand why well this is a negative and this one is a positive if there is anything that says that that is positive later but for me on top of the engine is the positive so there is a also like a like a plug I can't imagine how would you access it you have everything on top of the engine so let's remove this and get this shit wires out of the way and again it's fucking getting dark also it's cold it's eight o'clock so right now there is nothing except drop the subframe on the dolly and roll this out and of course take off the front that's it that's where we are I'll try to do what I can. My goal is to take the front and uh, disconnect all of the power steering and everything on the bottom so that there is no uh, impedes on my way. So let's see. So first thing I took the corner lights out. It's basically a one screw access from from there it's Philips look at what these corner lights turn to these are aftermarket they're like two years old look at this shit this is a, this is the actual reason why you don't buy aftermarket because of this they're going into the trash actually yes they are going into the trash here we go so now I'll be removing headlights. Headlights also trash, but I'll keep them for now. Um, there's two bolts here. There's one there, right there. And uh, I think, I think there is, uh, that's it, that's it. Now I'm gonna remove the bumper. Now on this side it was damaged. So I had to put a screw going upwards. I'm gonna unscrew it. I guess you've seen it now, the trim. 
this trim comes off and uh, later this bracket comes off I guess it's self-explanatory uh, these bolts unhook the wire here so unhook the wire you broke off so much oil in here that even touching headlights makes you like this so my goal is to make sure once the car is finished there is no more oil everywhere like literally every fucking where there is you touch there is oil and this is the fan for the AC unplug right now I don't know if I'm gonna undo the actual AC maybe I'll just drop it out of the way because I don't want to recharge the system others they actually uh, drain it these are one-time use they cannot be reused as you can see and there is no way to get them out <clears throat> so I'll have to break every single one of them and they're sold at cheap so just like this these i don't know i'll just save them here there's an odd piece odd pieces go here like the most odd pieces okay now i unscrewed i unscrewed these ones as you can see they don't fall out now we can probably take the bumper off completely we will figure on what it holds and what's to deal with it Okay, the fucking bumper is removed. This has so much debris and shit in it, so hard to get out. Oh my god. So now the main part is this. Um, this shroud I'll leave here. Actually, we'll see. Now the main part, the top portion. This is the actuate the actuator. So we'll see. Okay, I took the front end off. So the way it's gonna work, this actually lifts as high as this, so there'll be no problem. There'll be whatsoever no problem getting the engine rolled out or rolled in fucking power steering fluid hate it the most it's the most stinky one actually it's the trans transmission hydraulic fluid dextron 3 or dextron 5 or whatever dextron the worst one Now is this so the bottom is gone everything is gone so I disconnected everything there is pretty much no subframe so the engine is held by this and I'll be rolling in the dolly A lot of bullshit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna first lower it unhook it then raise it then screw it back then put the dolly under then lower it from under the dolly I mean uh, raise from under the dolly and then uh, 
unhook it. All right, so now back of the engine transmission is on the dolly. Ah, fucking pain in the ass. Now the front. So, I guess we can start rolling. Transmission is out. Everything worked as I planned. It's good to have a plan. It really is good to have a plan. But I had to drop the entire front suspension. Everything. And then in the midst of it, I found my... No, yeah, actually, I'd... yeah, that probably has to be replaced. All the control arms and everything. Uh, so, one of these bolts was bad. Had to replace. Actually, I think all of them have to be replaced every time you unscrew them. engine is on a basically roller on the dolly right now I'm going to be taking this long ass transmission it's huge compared to the manual the manual probably is almost half the size so as you already know I'll we'll start with those bolts it's very easy I'm not gonna really show you how to the point of this video again is not to show how to is actually the point of uh, entertainment if you like this car if you like this build just watch it for the joy it's not nothing more than that so that's what we do here okay very interesting observation so basically there are i want to show this there are four of these bolts those are the largest ones those are the ones you put them on the engine stand so they are on the bottom and on the top there are two two medium sized ones two small ones and besides that there is a looks like a, a 10 millimeter head here before we get to those over there interesting right okay just took off the starter this is the original starter and what's funny about it that it's original it has 250,000 miles in it the car is from 2004 so it's how old yes 18 years old so this starter is 18 years old and it never failed never ever so I can't tell you how many cars I know where starter failure is actually a common thing. That's why AutoZone and Advanced Auto Parts, they stack those things for American cars and for Japanese cars. You can buy any starter for any model and they have it in stock. The reason for that is because they shit. But in this car, this is a th good thing. Look at that. It's amazing. Amazing okay so I ran into a problem which could be kind of obvious but I'll show you in a second so basically I was able to remove one of those bolts but the second one I can't rotate the engine it does rotate to a certain point and then it stops and that's how it died actually so let me show you why okay as you can see this engine died from natural causes it wasn't due to operator's fault or it wasn't due to me not doing proper oil changes or anything like that so what happened is the tensioner snapped and the chain as it's longer than when it's not tense got wrapped around got wrapped around and uh, that's why it it quit rotating and that, that that was about it so these plastic pieces they're not forever 
looks like i thought the engine can last forever if i just service it properly but as it appears not even close uh, it's garbage now so something to learn about servicing this if you really want to have your engine go forever or for for a while as you can see it's clean inside there isn't, isn't anything wrong with it it's just it's that way I officially removed the transmission now I have to remove the actual torque converter and the plate so the torque converter will be knocked out I guess well, I put all the bolts here back because I feel kind of like safer about that you know those things are three dollars each you lose one you lose three dollars and it's not hard to it's really not hard to lose many when you do this it's best to even put them in the original position which I did not in this case but I did as close as I remember so we'll see okay the torque converter removed I know it doesn't look big but it weighs close to 45 pounds think about it your engine spends this amount of resources rotating that shit so you can shift smoother I mean to me this is obviously stupid so I really 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 want to do manual swap because it just doesn't make any sense to continue this madness so I'll make sure all the bolts are in place all the little ones wherever they go as much as I can okay so now time to remove the flywheel and get it on a stand Clean the mess well not so much but enough to work on so right now engine is on the stand uh, this that came off the transmission I only had two the other two I took from the manual swap they were longer so if I didn't have those I wouldn't be able to mount this engine on the stand having the same hardware screws that came with the engine itself just be mindful of that um, so now we're gonna drop the pen we're gonna unscrew all the bolts except the four uh, side ones so that I can drop the pen down with the rest of junk that is in there because otherwise I'm gonna make more and more mess in here uh, this oil pan is removed the gasket was actually replaced uh, about three years ago and it's sad that I have to throw it away at this point it was a good gasket so now I'm gonna remove this this all these bolts this 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 very easy um, you see I try to keep the uh, original bolts here and I may actually want to even I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put these bolts in here we need to clean um, yeah so kind of like that 
very simple uh, these things are marked uh, they have the same number on one on one end on the other so they stay the same the rods and we're gonna be taking the pistons out and uh, the crank and at that point we can take the engine and all the other parts to the wash once it's all washed then it can be reassembled but right now we can only spend about a week a week and a half before the parts arrive to just make it perfect restore everything plan everything and so forth so let's go ahead and start untorquing this by the way I bought new rod bolts and those are rough okay all right and that's we're gonna repeat one by one with a rotation of the engine itself let's see uh, we'll see oh wow holy shit wow Hmm, this may be a problem. This may be a big problem. Uh, let's see where we can set it. Set it on the bench. Oh, shit. Okay, the piston rings are good. They're moving. We'll see more about the wear and tear later. So for now, I'm just gonna start setting everything over here like that let's go next wow 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 remove the pistons now time to remove this and I'm very worried about the crank because of some of these things <laughs> of the bearings they were rotating with the actual rod around the crank and the worst one was the first and it's pretty bad I do feel roughness here it's pretty severe so it is possible that I may need a new crank and finally finally just clean the shit out of it it only took seven hours for all the chemicals known to man to mankind yes yeah, so now it looks like brand new and that's the point my point is to make all parts new again and I'm gonna make sure that they are new so everything is great here uh, anyways now is the end of this assembly so I have to still clean the pistons and uh, also the crankshaft and some other parts that go on the block like the front plate the engine mounts and blah 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 a lot to clean anyways so my parts arrive in about a week and a half maybe two weeks including delays so the two weeks I will spend on perfecting this part itself I mean it looks clean but to me it's not perfect there are some you see that has to be cleaned Anyways, uh, that's it. To restore aluminum is this. Basically what this is doing 
is making it shiny as it's shown so you've seen the head of the engine you've seen the engine it's very bad so I'm gonna have to clean the engine first degrease it completely until it turns this way right as, like this is the most you can do this is above so this is the compound I have to use so the way it works you have to use a small you have to use it in a small portion uh, going from the bottom up and uh, if you go from the top it will cause uh, basically drips and that will make lines that are visible so let's see how it comes out so what I'm doing right now I'm polishing each cylinder so this one is about 90% complete I'm gonna polish it more and the rest are not so as you can see this is the kind of stuff I'm getting rid of and uh, that so it has to be smooth it's not normal to have anything like that and reassemble the engine I don't believe in this I know guys they work in like they have garages and they rebuild probably like 10 engines a month but they just don't even clean components they just smack everything as it was before and replace broken parts and that's it in my case I'm taking it a little bit different so I want to make sure everything is perfect like I said there is no cutting corners So I'm just gonna clean with WD-40 the cylinders. So for that I figured a very simple device. form a, like a ball finish the actual cylinder bores now they're nice and shiny and smooth except you can see this one has imperfections they all have some but this one has the most and it's funny that this one actually is not the problem one the problem one was the number one this is the one that chewed the bearings and still looks perfect so the way you clean this I guess exactly like your gun barrel it has to look smooth it has to be uh, exactly like a gun barrel